here's the 1971 Dodge School Bus. This was brought in on a flatbed trailer from Abilene this morning. And we'll take a look at it here uh, before any anything's been done to it. It's going to need some repairs just to try to start it up, but it's in pretty decent shape. Let's take a look underneath here. Looks like these lines here for the transmission oil cooler. It's got a Dodge 440 in it. Looks like a four barrel carburetor. It's got the Mopar electronic ignition module and voltage regulator up there. Both the radiator hoses were cut and the radiator is loose on here. I don't know if I don't know why that was done. If if it was thought that the radiator was bad and needed to be replaced or what. We'll have to just test it. There's a bunch of mouse poop and stuff in here and, and seeds and it looks like mice got in here and chewed through this wiring so we'll have to clean all that up. Looks like the last in-service date was 2000. Tires, the tires would not be road, not be safe for road driving. They're all pretty, pretty worn and cracked. But they, I think I should be able to put another video up of actually bringing the bus in here on the trailer. But I always put safety first in trying to bring old vehicles home and not try to drive something which might not be really safe for the roads. So everything I've had brought in here, I've had it brought in on a tow truck or a, uh, a flatbed trailer. The Chrysler Fifth Avenue was about the only thing that was in any, any shape to drive on the road before I repaired it. There's a little Pentastar emblem here, just like on the uh, Savoy. Here's the driver's compartment of the bus. Looks like an Allison automatic transmission. They actually put a uh, an air fitting into the air tank and was able to air up the brakes from the uh, semi truck that brought this in, so the so they could drive it off the trailer just by gravity, but still have brakes with it. There's several temperature gauges here. Several oil pressure gauges. One maybe for transmission temperature. Looks like there's a little electric warning thing here. Here's the air brake control. I think these are original Dodge gauges here. And the original Dodge speedometer. The accelerator pedal is missing. Here's the brake pedal. I think this is just a single air system. I think this was before they mandated dual air systems for school bus brakes. I think this would have had the Dodge Fratzog emblem on it, but it, it was all painted over with some white paint. There's the carpenter switch panel. Here's where the radio would have gone. I remember the radio being in here on the school buses that I rode when I was in elementary school. They would just have a uh, an AM radio right in here. Now let's go into the living compartment of the bus. The bus was converted to be an RV. As you may have seen in that video I made several years ago. This looks like a desk here that flips that flips up. Propane powered heater. Here's the bed. The restroom is back here. It's kind of hard to see, but 
Here's the shower. <laughs> you can't really see it. Here's the shower head. Here's the shower curtain. There's the commode back there. I guess the the wastewater tank for the commode is probably in here somewhere and there's a drain port. I'll have to check that out outside. It's in here. Looks like so it looks like a water holding tank. Back here is the sink. There's another heater there. There's an electrical junction box here. There's a place where an air conditioner originally mounted. Here's the driver's area. look at the sign here. There's a platform up there that luggage can go on. Here's a just a storage compartment. Looks like an auxiliary battery might have gone in here one time. This tire is really really cracked. Here's the extension cord down here that would have tied into the uh, the campsite power outlet. It looks like a trailer connector there. Let's see if I can get down under it here. Six twenty-eight of seventy-one. Actually, that's when it was manufactured. Over here is the propane tank. Down in here. So that's pretty much all of the bus. First step is to try to get the radiator hooked back up and see if we can get the engine running. Hopefully there's not any freeze plug problems or anything with it, but so there it is all before repairs have been made.